All the rendering is done, and so now if I close this out and then select this again, look at that, 116.1 gigs. Going to storage, you can now see I only have 44.54 gigs free on my hard drive. Let me show you how to solve this. Yeah, my iMac's still in the kitchen. I'm, I'm gonna get it moved upstairs very soon. So this video is going to be about trying to edit on an iMac base model with only a 251 gig, even though the website says it's 256 gigabyte solid state drive. Now, Final Cut does something that I've never seen before in any other editing software. I've used uh, Cyberlink PowerDirector for the past two, three years that I've been doing YouTube videos. I actually have the 365 subscription where I paid once a year. Sadly, that subscription is only for a Windows PC. That, I mean, I thought it was like a subscription. I didn't think it would matter what type of computer I had, but it's a bit of a hassle for me to switch it to a Mac. My Mac actually came with a 90-day trial of Final Cut Pro, which is basically what everybody on YouTube normally uses to uh, edit their videos. I normally don't like following in line, but I can definitely say there's there's tons of things that I've found in this that have been very helpful, uh, while also there's been very confusing things. So I'm gonna set the camera up here and uh, I'm gonna show you what happens to all of my storage if I pull in a whole bunch of content uh, into Final Cut, then make this ginormous file that uh, takes up so much space on my drive, depending on how much content I have on the computer. I have about 40 gigs of vlogs right now on here that are just things I gotta edit and, and put out. So let me show you that, and then let me uh, kind of go through the best tips that I would suggest to solve this problem so that you can edit videos on a 1299 iMac uh, without having to pay $1,700 for the one with the half a terabyte drive. For 1,700 bucks, they couldn't give you a terabyte. I mean, for 1,300 bucks, they couldn't give me 500 gigs, like, Apple's, Apple's a little crazy, but people still love them. I don't, I literally wanted this thing for the speed, so that's why I purchased it. So click that like button for me, click subscribe, check out Indulge Clothing for the merch, and uh, let me show you some of this. So first, I'm gonna go up here and go to About This Mac, and I'm gonna show you that my storage Showing that I have 164 gigabytes available out of the 245. Now let's open up our trial of uh, Final Cut Pro. I have to click OK on this. I still have 85 days left though. Alright, so this is my media from the Renaissance Fair. Uh, one tip, definitely make sure that leave files in place is selected or else uh, this 20 some odd gig video will then instantly double to 40 gigs. So let's import all of this which as you can see, I mean, it does within seconds. All right, now that I have all my media selected, we're gonna bring it down here to the timeline and drop it all in place so that I can begin to edit this vlog. Now you'll see that it's doing its rendering. This is where everything gets crazy. Only on 5% and you can see there is now at 4.5 gigabytes. Now this is about 36 minutes of footage, so this is, this is a lot bigger than I'm normally dealing with, but either way, if you have a lot of content on your iMac and you're trying to edit, this makes everything very complicated. You can see here we're up to 60% rendering, and our file size is now 67.7 gigabytes. All the rendering is done, and so now if I close this out and then select this again, look at that, 116.1 gigs for this 36 minute video about the Renaissance Fair. And if I come back up here and go into storage, you can now see I only have 44.54 gigs free on my hard drive. Let me show you how to solve this. First, we're gonna, go to, we're gonna close out a Final Cut we're gonna go over here and get rid of this massive file, which is the file right there, 117 gigs. We're gonna get rid of it. And now you can see we're back up to 163 gigs free. Now you'll notice here I have in an external hard drive. This is a two terabyte Western Digital Passport normal spinning disk hard drive. Now we'll open up Final Cut Pro again. And then once we're on this screen, we'll come over here 
and we can select modify setting. We then get this nice window where I can move everything from the actual drive to the external drive. On your external drive, uh, make you a folder. I called mine Final Cut, and then I called all of these uh, the same three names as the settings here. So now I should be able to go into the settings, select the drop down, choose a location for the media, and then we'll select our Final Cut drive and media, choose. Then we'll go down here for the cache, do the same thing. Final Cut Drive, Final Cut Pro, cache, choose. And then the same for backups. Final Cut Drive, backups. Now, this is the only one you can't move off the computer, but now these are all set to go to those drives, so we'll click OK. Now, let's make us another video. All right, imported our media again. Now this time, and then drag it down to our timeline. Now we'll let it go through the same process up here to do its rendering. And then once, you, once we're done, you'll see that we have another 120 gig some odd file, but it will not be taking up the space on your iMac. Now it's only at 2%. This is definitely going to take a little longer with a normal external hard drive like I have. Now, if you come to Amazon, you see that uh, one terabyte to two terabyte solid state drives are anywhere from 125 to 250 bucks, which would give you much better speed when you're trying to do this. Save a little bit of money, you could come in and buy a uh, normal, just one terabyte SSD for about $100, of course, depending on where. And for $20, grab you one of these USB-C drive enclosures. You could then put your solid state drive in there and you should get much faster speed than you would off of an old school record player hard drive. We can see it's already at 12%. It's definitely not taking that long. This is the exact same 36 minutes of footage that I showed you before. I also had a caveat here that this is only gonna be for some people. Some people may be able to use this 256 gigs and not have an issue editing. If they do daily vlogging where they literally record a vlog and download it and then edit it and then they're done with it, they, could, they should be perfectly fine. Me, I create vlogs and then something else comes out and I'll create that vlog and I'm waiting to upload that one because I have another one that I need to upload so then I get this backlog of storage. But because some of the files are so huge, I think the best way is to try to use the external drive. So uh, let's let this finish and then I'll show you. We'll still have all of the storage from our iMac and it'll all be over here on our uh, Final Cut drive. And so now that it's done rendering again, I can show you that this file is only showing 6 MB on the Macintosh HD. And that's because if we go up here and go to about this Mac, you can see we still have 159 gigs free on our main Macintosh drive. If we go into our Final Cut drive, and then I can just, not with one hand, select Get Info, you can see this drive has the 116 gigs in it that was on the Macintosh drive. Now my 36 minute video is not gonna be an issue to edit. And I don't seem to see any... <laughs> it still seems to do everything that it did before just as fast. Um, I'll say the rendering time did not seem like it was much longer either, if it was even longer at all. I feel like it took very, very close to the same amount of time to render on the external drive as it did on the iMac. Every time I start recording, I swear. So basically, to edit with Final Cut on a base model M1 iMac, or really any base model iMac that only comes with the 256 gigs, of storage, or 251 gigs, you're really going to need an external drive unless you're literally recording one video, deleting it, recording the next video, putting it on here, editing it, deleting it, and so on. I'd also highly recommend one of these little anchors. Uh, this has two USB ports, an extra USB-C, and uh, even a full SD card and a micro SD card slot, and an HDMI. So um, I definitely recommend one of those as another way to utilize the two ports that you have on the back of your $1,300 new desktop.
So there we go. Hopefully that has helped somebody out. I know it took me a minute to figure this out. I had to figure this out on my own. I'm like, I have 240 gigs. How's it all taken up? Granted, I knew I had moved 40 gigs of videos to it, but I, I wasn't understanding how it was being taken up until I realized how big those files were. And then I realized that I could move those to an external drive. That just made the process a lot easier. Also, if you're coming from Windows, you, you may have to format these drives to be more compatible. For example, when I first plugged this drive up, I could not just create a folder and I couldn't move stuff to and from. So uh, I went into the disk utility and then reformatted the drive. Of course, make sure nothing's on it before you do that. That allowed me uh, to then use the drive as I would in Windows. So that'll do it for this video. Hopefully I've helped somebody out there who uh, just got them an M1 iMac to do some editing on and they came across this issue if they tried to edit a long 30 or 40 minute video because they ran out of space. So click that like button for me, click subscribe, indulge in your life and check out indulgeclothing.com for the merch and we'll see you in the next video. Deuces.